Welcome to Gatsby Point, located at the northern tip of Narragansett Bay in the state of Rhode Island, one of the original 13 American colonies. Gatsby Point is a nice place for a waterfront stroll, but lurking here, just inches below the surface of the water, is a sandbar that has surprised and trapped many a sailor over the centuries. And in June of 1772, a dramatic event took place at this natural trap, which ignited the cause for revolution among all the colonies. The burning of His Majesty King George III's schooner, Gatsby. Rhode Island was the smallest of the original 13 American colonies. It was founded by Roger Williams, a Puritan minister, expelled from the nearby Massachusetts Bay Colony for his controversial views, such as freedom of religion, separation of church and state, and fair treatment of Native Americans. Williams founded a new settlement he called Providence as a haven for dissenters and freedom lovers everywhere. Over the next century, the new colony of Rhode Island flourished, in great part thanks to its extraordinary natural harbor, Narragansett Bay, with many ports that facilitated trade between New England and the rest of the Atlantic. They also participated in what became known as the Triangle Trade, which sent rum to Africa, enslaved men and women to the West Indies, and molasses to New England for the manufacture of more rum. In 1754, tensions between rival colonial powers, Britain and France, led to battles over disputed territories and eventually to the Seven Years' War, known in America as the French and Indian War. Britain emerged from the conflict victorious. All the colonial lands of New France became the domain of King George III, the new monarch of the United Kingdom. To pay off its debts, the British Crown levied taxes on the American colonies by instituting the Sugar Act and the Stamp Act. The Americans considered these taxes unfair and unreasonable, and since the colonies had no representation in Parliament, they had not been asked if they were willing to pay for the Empire's wars. Thus, a famous cry of democracy was born. While tensions were rising throughout the American colonies, a tragic incident took place in 1770, about 50 miles north of Providence in Boston. A crowd began to harass a lone British sentry, who was then joined by another eight British soldiers. Disperse! Disperse at once! <laughs> what you gonna do, huh? Shoot at us? You would not dare. The colonial mob started to throw stones and snowballs at the soldiers and hit them with clubs. Eventually, the British soldiers reacted with deadly force. Fire! Fire! Five people were killed, several others wounded. After this violent incident, tension seemed to die down for a couple of years and the Rhode Islanders continued their lucrative maritime trade throughout the Atlantic. But then, in 1772, the British made a decision that would change the tide of history. They sent an uncompromising naval commander, William Duddingston, on a mission to Rhode Island. The Gatsby was ordered to station in Narragansett Bay on January 25, 1772. Its mission was to catch smugglers with undeclared cargo and force Rhode Island merchants to pay every last penny of taxes owed to the British Crown. 
Lieutenant Duddingston quickly made a name for himself in the colony. He stopped boats and ships of every size, harassed merchant sailors, and sometimes fired upon Rhode Island vessels, all on the pretext of enforcing the law. Unlock the hatches. Inspect every... The lucrative maritime business of the colonists had been considerably disrupted by the overzealous Duddingston, and they were utterly fed up. Somehow, the Rhode Islanders had to stop the gasping. But how? An opportunity presented itself on June 9, 1772. The cargo sloop Hannah was a small boat that made regular trips up and down Narragansett Bay. It was owned by John Brown of the powerful Brown family from Providence, and John Brown had a plan to stop Duddingston once and for all. A chase ensued up the bay. In the name of his majesty's navy, stop! Stop at once! The captain of the Hannah didn't stop and continued to sail north towards Providence. Duddingston took the Gaspi in pursuit, even firing cannons at the Hannah. But Duddingston was in for a surprise. At Namquid Point, there is a sandbar hidden just under the surface of the water. Local sailors were familiar with it and knew to avoid the hazard. But Duddingston had never sailed so far north. As the Hannah approached Namquid Point, the Hannah's captain expertly avoided the sandbar, knowing just where it was, and swung around the hazard to lure the Gaspi into the trap. Stuck now on the sandbar, the Gaspi would be stranded and vulnerable for several hours. Discussing what should be done with it, quickly repair the Savant's house. Hear up, hear up. The evening of June 9th at Sabin's Tavern, John Brown roused a party of local men to join him in raiding the Gaspi while the ship lay helpless on the sandbar. The plan was to row down to Namquit Point in longboats, armed with guns, boat hooks, stones, and whatever else they could find, to arrest Captain Duddingston. They had muffled the oars of their rowboats by wrapping the oar locks, kept as silent as possible to avoid discovery, and waited until the moon was setting to ensure absolute darkness. Half an hour after midnight, the Gaspi came into view. As the longboats approached the Gaspi, all the British crew were asleep under deck except for one man who stood watch. Who comes there? I said, who comes there? Captain Duddingston, Captain Duddingston, come quick. Awakened, Captain Duddingston comes out of his cabin, dressed in his nightshirt with a pistol and a sword in hand. Good God. We have you now. Do not, do not come near this schooner. I am warning you or I will have you fired upon. One of the Rhode Islanders, a gentleman, calls out to Duddingston and orders the colonists to action. I am the sheriff of the county of Kent. I am the commander of this vessel and have him I will, dead or alive. Men, spring to your oars. To your guns, to your guns. Fire on them, quick, they're almost upon us. As the Gaspy crew comes to Duddingston's side, clumsily preparing for what looks like an attack, one of the colonial raiders makes a fateful move. F, reach me your gun. I can kill that fella. <laughs> the captain goes down, but is he dead? I have killed that rascal. I have you now. The colonists reach the Gaspy and swarm on board, quickly overwhelming the Gaspy crew. Tie them all up and put them on the longboats. What about you, Duddingston? Lord, have mercy on me. I am done for. Evidently not. Duddingston is attended to by a doctor among the colonists, while the crew is put on board the Rhode Island boats to be taken ashore. And then... A good night's work, boys! <laughs> it is burning! The 
completed their bold mission, rode to shore with the wounded Duddingston and his crew, landing at a place known as Stillhouse Cove in Patuxent. The raiders escorted the sailors of the Gaspee to a nearby house and locked them up in the cellar overnight. As for Duddingston, he was carried to a house of a local Tory a short distance away. On the morning of June 10th, word of the Gaspee's destruction started to spread quickly throughout the colony and beyond. In August, King George III received news of the unprecedented rebellion. Shot my captain! Burned my ship! These barbarous actions must not go unpunished! The King of Great Britain sent a royal proclamation that offered a 500 pound reward for each of the raiders, plus another 1,000 pounds for the arrest of the captain and self-appointed sheriff of the mob. King George III must have felt confident that with such strong measures and a king's ransom, the raiders of the Gaspi would finally be apprehended. However, the king underestimated the outrage that his proclamation would provoke. Despite the 500 and 1,000 pound rewards offered by King George, no one was turned in. The commission was forced to disband without coming to any definite conclusion about who the attackers were. When the news reached Providence, there must have been plenty of celebrating back at Sabin's Tavern. In the aftermath of the Gatsby incident, tensions between Britain and the 13 American colonies continued to rise. The Sons of Liberty and other patriots repurposed Benjamin Franklin's Join or Die cartoon, created in 1754, depicting the colonies as a snake chopped into pieces. It became a rallying point for the Americans. But in Boston, a meeting called by Samuel Adams sparked off a more original sort of rebellion. On December 16, 1773, protesters in Boston, disguised as Indians, raided three ships of the British East India Company. They boarded the ships and dumped over 300 chests of tea into Boston Harbor. With friction between the colonies and Britain escalating to new heights, members of the Committees of Correspondence decided to meet together as a group for the first time and an event known as the First Continental Congress in Philadelphia. They formed a provisional government, patriots, and began to train militias in the increasingly likely case that open war broke out. The British, of course, could not allow the formation of a colonial militia. So on April 19, 1775, an army of 700 British soldiers attempted to prevent an armed rebellion by confiscating a stockpile of military supplies held in Concord, Massachusetts. But word of the expedition was spread by messengers on horseback, including the famous Paul Revere. When the troops reached Lexington, the Patriot forces were waiting. The American militias, led by future President George Washington, clashed with the British throughout the colonies, leading to a war that would last for eight years and to the creation of a common government for the 13 United States that no longer recognized British sovereignty. These states proclaimed their existence for the first time in a document known as the Declaration of Independence. Signing of this document on July 4th, 1776, officially founded the United States of America. 